It's time for recipe of the day. My kids both really love the Sarku chicken from the mall, and I really like it too. And so quite often, if I don't know what to make on an evening, I end up just kind of mixing up a basic teriyaki-like sauce and tossing some chicken thighs into there and cooking those up. And then I know that they're going to eat them and I'm going to like them too. So I've come up with this teriyaki chicken thighs recipe that has like a teriyaki sauce that you make kind of on a whim that uses mostly ingredients that you probably probably have in your pantry. And then I have a whole bunch of substitutions that I've used over the years in case you don't have any of those things. So it really is one of those things that you don't like have to plan ahead to make. You probably have rice to serve it with. You probably have some kind of green vegetable that you can cook up to have with it. Maybe you have some green onions to throw on top of it and the chicken and then those pantry ingredients for the sauce, you know? So I usually use uh, chicken thighs for this boneless skinless just because we like them best. They're juicy. And I do think that's what they use at the mall and it's that nice dark meat chicken. So that is what I use here. I don't bother to cut them up because it's just another step. It takes time. I never like cutting up raw chicken. I know I told you this before. I know it's not a big deal, but if I can avoid doing it, I'm not getting it on my cutting board. It's really like just open the package and add the meat to the sauce. And that's easier than having to cut anything up. Now, if you want to cut it up, that's fine. Your cooking time is just going to be a little bit less because the pieces are smaller. I will say, that lately the chicken thighs from my grocery store have been of uneven sizes. You know, they come like on a tray sort of rolled into those little bundles and you open them up and some of them are small and some are big. I have been lately taking the bigger ones and cutting them in half, just kind of right through the middle. And that makes them the same size as the smaller ones, like widthwise through the middle, not lengthwise through the middle. And then that way they're the same size. I just use a pair of clean kitchen shears, kitchen scissors for that. If you wanted to use chicken breasts instead, you can. I would just go with cutlets or either that or take the chicken breast, put it on the cutting board and slice it through so that you end up with two cutlets, kind of like with your knife parallel to the cutting board, you're slicing through the chicken breast. And I'm saying that just because I think that in the time that the full size chicken breast would take to cook through, the sauce has sugar in it and it's going to darken quite a bit. It could even burn in that time. You want this to be reasonably quick cooking and those chicken thighs tend to be a little bit thinner than the chicken breast, you know? So yeah, cut those in half through the middle there to make thin cutlets and that'll be better. Or cut them into little pieces and then you're just cooking them until they're cooked through. Okay, I think it's going to be easier if I tell you about the ingredient substitutions now as a big chunk as opposed to as I'm explaining the recipe because there are a lot of them. So I'll just go through them quickly before telling you how to make this. So instead of soy sauce, well, you can use regular or low sodium. I tend to have low sodium, but of course it's going to work with full. You can use tamari, which is kind of just a high quality soy sauce. If you don't have those things, the best substitution that I have found is to use some beef stock or broth, full salt or add salt to it, or you can make it up with bouillon. So a quarter cup of that, and then you add some Worcestershire sauce to it. And it's not going to taste like soy sauce, but you're going to have the like salty meatiness from the stock and the saltiness there. And then the Worcestershire sauce is adding some of that umami as well. It's a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, or instead of the Worcestershire, you could do a teaspoon of fish sauce with the beef stock. So that is your soy sauce substitute. Instead of brown sugar, you can use an equal amount of white sugar or honey or agave. That would work in there too. Uh, the cornstarch. There's a little bit of cornstarch in here to thicken the sauce. Just omit it. If you don't have cornstarch, it's not going to matter. The sauce is really simmering quite a bit in the pan and coating the chicken. It won't stick white as well of the chicken, but like barely noticeable. Okay. The recipe also calls for rice, wine, vinegar. You can use almost any other kind of vinegar instead. It's such a small amount that it's not going to matter. I would just say to avoid something really strongly flavored like balsamic vinegar, because it has such a distinctive taste. You're going to taste that in the sauce, right? Okay. The recipe calls for fresh garlic cloves, three of them. You can use one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder instead. And the recipe calls for ground ginger, but you can use a teaspoon of minced fresh ginger instead. Or if you don't want to use ginger or you don't have ginger fresh or ground, you can use a little bit of ground cloves, an eighth of a teaspoon or of cinnamon. Just enough so there's that light spicy note, but not really so you can tell what it is, you know? 
And then the last ingredient other than the chicken is the vegetable oil. And you can use whatever cooking oil you usually use to saute. That's fine. You can, in addition to everything I just said, make this spicy with a little bit of red pepper flakes or a hot sauce or like sriracha. That would be great. You could do that. That'll be to taste. And then, like I said, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You can use boneless, skinless chicken breasts if you cut them the way I said. You can do this with shrimp. You could use cut up pork for this. Pork tenderloin cut into little bite-sized pieces would be great. So those are all options. Okay, so you're going to get out a large mixing bowl and to it you're adding your sauce ingredients. So if you're doing the substitutions I talked about, you would use those. I'm going to tell you the actual ingredients from the recipe. It's a quarter cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of brown sugar, a tablespoon of cornstarch, two teaspoons of rice wine vinegar, three cloves of garlic that you've minced up, a half teaspoon of ground ginger. And you mix that up just until it's well combined. And then you're adding in the boneless, skinless chicken thighs, one and a half pounds of them, like un roll them if they're rolled up and put them in there and then just toss them all around to coat them really well. And then you're getting out a large nonstick skillet. Now it's nonstick or like a well-seasoned cast iron. And that's because there's sugar in the sauce and it's going to kind of stick caramelized to the pan a little bit. And it's going to make your life way easier for cleanup if that was a nonstick surface that you're getting that off of as opposed to like just a straight up metal, you know? Okay. So get out your large nonstick skillet, set it over medium high heat and then you're adding those chicken thighs from the sauce in a single layer and drizzle any of the remaining sauce over top of them. And you're cooking them over medium high until they're nice and brown underneath, three to four minutes. Then flip and cook them on the other side until they're brown, three to four minutes. Then reduce the heat to low and you're going to cook them on low for two to three minutes at a time, flipping every couple of minutes until they're no longer pink inside. It's going to be about another six to eight minutes total. And then they're done. Transfer them to a serving platter, sprinkle with some green onions, get some rice, whatever, broccoli, anything like that that you're having, and dig in nice, easy chicken teriyaki thighs. I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. Everything there is arranged by date, so it's helpful to know that today is August 21st of 2024. The other place you can get the recipe is in our Facebook group. I post the link to the recipe of the day every single day over there, so you can always find what I'm talking about about, join that group at facebook.com slash groups slash recipe OTD. I am Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook. And from this podcast recipe of the day, I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. <laughs> 